Right now I'm having a couple of thoughts. Key words being handicaps, Olympics, supplemental usage, steroids, the hard and easy, and how hard does gold need be? Well, what is it surrounded by and the hardness thereof? Now, also, one other aspect in relation to this voice memo is in relation to the cheesecloth, the holy sanctified cheesecloth, that ultimately just uh, really you know, is a, is a pathway of possession in its own end towards domination through uh, forcing a cheese and the need for there to be irony, the need for there to be humor in all of this so that your hand then actually seeks out this humor and... Lo and behold, the humor itself to overcome the event is provided by those that caused the distress. Ultimately, now, this is somewhat in relation to my little hieroglyph on medicine with the man and his shadow forming. There's a monster behind him, and he's checking his own heart rate, and it's pulsing. And then he slays the monster. And then in the next depiction, he is, you know, sleeping with the fishes. And his heart rate is ceased. Also, this is uh, reminding me of the dialogue that I've had in the form of personal rhetoric about the boobs and germ warfare. Whereas... The boobs, you know, are like this uh, this cheese game where uh, they are the ones that actually create the need for there to be this escape from the heat by creating the heat through this, this mechanism. And... Uh, you can't help but go for the milk at this point in time, you know, and open up to it. Same way that the cheesecloth gets you to open up by uh, the created desire for, you know, these things that actually, you know, are orders seeking the same endeavors as most things, travel, expanse, experience, knowledge, um, belovedness, companionship, a sense of purpose, and a sense of place and ownership, really, um, and possession of things, which ultimately, you know, can lead to these things owns end by, uh, how much and what they seek to possess, you know, in the end, possessing them. Um, you know, that, that game, that struggle, that strife, um, the resistance uh, to uh, continue the game, the, resist the resistance to uh, continue through there being, you know, these, what I've now have a connection with someone about where I've created, you know, this like meaning through dialogue where there's this whole broad, expansive, connective terminology, all collapsing a woman with a great pair on her as a polar bear, you know, because polar bears themselves rely heavily upon the seal pups. And then I, I tried to collapse the whole, you know, experience of enjoying a good pair 
to uh, the sound effects that I felt that it made. It had to be sealed off, which there is the game itself to actually gain access to open this seal. And then the pop, because honestly, it's just a white fluid, like a zitty mess. But who doesn't enjoy, you know, popping those packing puffs of plastic or whatever else have you, you know, that polar bear, that uh, Star Wars walking mechanism bear that is just surrounded by this icy warfare, you know, creating a need for the nice, which is, you know, the ice, you know, that uh, dialogue that I've had about blood and water comes to mind in regards to uh, topic of conversation on the ice in the Iceland and uh, these machines, these mechanisms, which, you know, force a connection across borders and barriers and, and say that, you know, things that don't share their blood or whatever else have you, um, then will die off, you know, and it's, it's the way to attack the purists um, by saying, you know, through a, a, a lead, it's like leading someone to a trap where ultimately the trap changes your vision to where then you come across the trap and then it's either, you know, you change or you die. And the change itself is in allowing there to be, you know, other genetic influences within the body. Um, but ultimately it was you being led into this, this trap where your vision now around you due to the things that have, I guess, become influential parts of your life, then play a key role in actually saying that you will die, you know, unless you partake and incorporate, right? Uh, but ultimately, I think that all that is confounded with uh, some of the thoughts that I directed towards the anthropology department, you know, of an extreme spiritual nature, where it's like, I think it's so funny, and I love it when people try and take it to a religious, spiritual extreme, because really then it's, uh, you know, all's fair in love and war at that point in time, where, you know, the sense of spirituality then will uh, collapse into really there being no rules. And at that point in time, it's just like me talking about that, presentation changed my mind well ultimately then existence becomes something that can be put out on the table as being in question at that point in time if we're getting that far down the road of you know terminology and and uh, complex notions of existence and uh, genetic information and whatever else have you you know and I, I can all of a sudden collapse existence itself through uh, you know a mountain which you know, is able to cross over and talk uh, and and say, well, what is it even existence? And then, you know, as soon as I bring that up to question, it doesn't even matter if you die because then, you know, your spirit and through their own understanding of what their mechanisms are to utilize to create fear, support the mechanism of your continued existence beyond this one into the place in which, you know, you'll arise anyway, so it doesn't even matter if you die, because ultimately through infinity, uh, your existence will come about again, so you don't actually need to mix and mingle, really, any of your parts. Um, you just have to pretty much just wait until what was once is again. What was once will be again. What was once will be again, right? And uh, now this is taking me to loop back around to the beginning of this this uh, entry here where, uh, you know, talking about the handicap and the stairs and the elevators, right? Where it's like people get a little pissed off when it's like you're on the level that they are, but you took a different route. And, you know, all of a sudden it's just like really they can't stand their ground against you because, uh, you know, the route you took and so ultimately the the pathway the the mechanism you know the structural organization of the substance which you yourself are a participating part in upon your consumption and continued prolonged use of said whatever's 
are outlawed, illegalized, you know, can't take the stairs because here we take the elevator to get to that point. Uh, you know, but but really then this, this whole thing collapses uh, way further than into really just my whole position on interaction with everything and, and uh, being a participating uh, being within the constructs of everything that else that is going on and and really you know working towards the enrichment of my own life which uh, then leads my actions really to not necessarily be ones that are confrontational towards anybody else's existence or you know whatever pathway of mechanism that they support or live by and so really you know I talk all this but then ultimately as I act and I'm uh, you know, uh, an integrated part within this community and outside of this community and within, you know, sharing that unshared experience by, uh, you know, seeing the things that connect existence itself together, um, really just kind of following, following all of that leads me to actually playing the game in a way which really <laughs> doesn't break any of the rules, like ironically enough, which really means that like, do the rules and the signs really need to be posted? Well, not necessarily for someone following this, you know, until, like I said before, they end up in a place and someone's like, you're not supposed to be here. Well, it's just like, hey, well, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe you were there first. Uh, the one who got there without uh, having to take the laid out road, really. But, uh, you know, sometimes life's about contradicting yourself, blindsiding yourself to really kind of rein in your own horses here. And uh, if that means that, you know, you're telling yourself to get off the mountain by listening to the, the structures and formations around you that are giving you clues as to, um, you know, what it is that your action should be, you know, at that point in time, you got to weigh out the, uh, the portion that is, that is speaking on behalf of this warning and whatever else and say, you know, why, what is this thing telling me? Ultimately, I think that to a certain extent, if we continue forward down a road and we ignore the warnings of things that are that are warning us either to do something or not do something. Ultimately, what that really means is that we're about to actually excise and remove them from our body. And so, you know, they tell us that uh, we can't we can't do that or uh, we can't l live that way or life isn't that way. You know, that's a dead end, whatever have you. But ultimately, really, it's it's their dead end. It's not necessarily yours. And so you have to then weigh out as to whether or not you want this to be an incorporated part of your continued existence, right? Because the more and more that you heed these, these things, then the more and more that they'll play a part within your life, the more and more impactful they'll become. And, uh, and really, you know, uh, they themselves will be harder to separate from, um, as, as you then become an integrated part of them and, and they, you, Right, and then the death will be hard. There will be a steep cliff. There will be an edge that you come across, a sharp edge, you know, and uh, it will be akin to death, and it, it will be a, a very sharp point that is is very difficult to overcome because, as much as uh, you know, As much as you is actually these things themselves then at that point in time. And so to, to rid yourself of them is to almost, you know, do a total hard drive wipe. And then what are you, right? You know, getting into that, we could get into that. Like, what are you, you know, beyond all that? And, uh, you know, talking about the telos of a thing, the tell, um, you know, how much individuality does anything really have anyways when you know, talking about the grand scheme of things and, uh, you know, talking about the apparition of, of your spiritual essence elsewhere when it's come across in that place, 
you know, but ultimately there, it's so funny cause you're being drawn there at the same point in time as, as, as you investing in actually getting there. Uh, that's how it works. And, uh, so, you know, something is coming across your spirit, your, whatever defines like the, the identity that you hold true to yourself. And there's, you know, obviously points in time where it's, it's much more indicational where you're being drawn somewhere. Um, you know, but obviously how much this place actually defines you will come into your eyesight, actually, if you go there, you know, are you being drawn somewhere? And uh, the ability for you to then travel through space, and then maybe then all of a sudden that becomes your identity. We're talking about, you know, being the one who traverses many mazes or the one who doesn't progress past the initial maze itself you know, then your identity is the traveler at that point in time. And uh, you're this thing which is broad and expansive, as special as something that goes nowhere, really. And uh, you, you will ultimately find yourself where you are described and how you describe yourself. So... Anyways, it's been a good one. Wish I had an audience here to, you know, thank and hear uh, some clapping hands from, but I'll just have to settle for the <laughs> the meter on my recording device to just settle to zero. <laughs>